What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Talk Movies. I'm Brad. And I'm Miguel. And Halloween 3, season of the not Michael Myers. This is our <laughs> full commentary of it. I'm also yeah. introducing it to Miguel tonight. He's never seen this one, so this is going to be a fun time. Hey, you know what? I'm actually excited for this because, I don't know, it's a, it's not it's Halloween, but it's not Michael Myers. And that's just new and refreshing to me. Not saying Michael Myers is not refreshing, yeah, but it's just an interesting take. That's all I'll say. Well, it, it, it's interesting, like even given the history behind it and kind of how it came to be and the the whole just the whole thing with with Halloween three because it didn't do very well. I mean, released October twenty second in nineteen eighty two. <laughs> Uh, had a budget of two and a half million dollars. That's all they gave this one, and it only made fourteen, uh, uh, just under fourteen and a half million dollars. Million dollars at the box office. Um, only, only that much. So I mean, I, I know, like only that much. But compared to what the first two did, because the first two were very successful, um, but I, I, you know, basically what happened is people went to go see this, and they were like, "Hold, wait, where's?" where's Michael? Like where, where's Michael and Loomis? Where, where are like the characters that we've come to love now, you know? And it just, this, well, they both blew up. What do you expect? My guy from Halloween two. Here's the thing. I think Halloween three would have been significantly better received if they would have just left the title Halloween three off of it. But of course, John Carpenter wanted to go with his original idea. First of all, he didn't even really want to do this at all base i mean if, if we're getting really technical here he didn't want to do halloween 2 i mean at this point they they weren't very happy uh john and deborah hill because um again they they felt that halloween was a complete story there was nothing else to tell um and you know erwin yablons was like no we need to do a sequel like we have to do another one so then halloween 2 happened um, but of course, you know, John Carpenter wanted to work on other projects. He was in pre-production on The Fog, uh, from 1980, and, you know, I, basically, Erwin Yablons fully intended to produce, uh, The Fog and, uh, I, I believe Escape from New York is the other one, um, in addition to Halloween 2, but, uh, Bob Ramey, who worked for Embassy Pictures, got wind of what was happening, and he made a backdoor deal with John Carpenter, which pissed off Erwin Yablons. Um, so essentially, they the, the agreement they made was for John and Deborah to make Halloween two in eighty one, and then John could still make Escape from New York and The Fog with Embassy if they would agree to do Halloween two. So. After Halloween 2, uh, the, you know, I, you got to give these guys credits where credit is due. Um, after Erwin Yablon sold the Halloween rights to Dino De Laurentiis, famous Italian filmmaker, um, and producer, obviously Dino De Laurentiis put that little clause in there that basically contractually obligated John Carpenter and Deborah Hill to do a Halloween 3. But of course that didn't necessarily include that it had to be Michael Myers. They just said there had to be a Halloween 3. So We love them cool. loopholes. <laughs> I know. And, and, you know, there's a lot of, especially with 2, 3, 4, I think is kind of where you could argue that the franchise really... It, it, it got a little bit more on track, and then, of course, once we get to H6 and H2O and Resurrection, then it kind of falls off the rails again, but... Um, yeah, th- this movie, it- it's a good movie, and it's a good Halloween movie, like, I- and I mean Halloween, the, the holiday, not Halloween, the franchise, it- it's just, it- you know, it- it's kind of got the sci-fi thing going on, this is more of like a sci-fi horror thriller type film than it really is a, a, a slasher, it's not really a slasher movie at all, so it- it- it's an interesting one, and I'm-, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this, Miguel, because it took me a while to warm up to it, but I, uh, I've come to really enjoy it. Is there a sci-fi take in this? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's, well, it's, I'm down for that. It's interesting. Um, definitely a very John Carpenter flick. So, uh, so if you guys have never done a commentary with us, we I, I'm watching it uh, on my Shout Factory Blu-ray. 
Miguel's watching it, I guess, what, on Amazon or so? Uh, whichever works. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but we are paused at uh, the, the black screen right before the Universal logo comes up. For me, on the Blu-ray, uh, it's at zero minutes, zero seconds. Miguel, I think it's like 15 seconds in or so. So go ahead, get your copy ready. Go ahead, pause it like right before the Universal logo comes up with the stars and all, you know, that classic Universal logo. Um, you can pause us, go ahead and get your copy ready, and then we'll start it together. We will say three, two, one, play. And when I say play, you're going to click play on whatever device you're watching on. So, Miguel, are you ready to introduce, uh, to, to introduce Investigative Dan? No. Uh, to be introduced <laughs> to the lovely Dan Chalice. I think you're going to love that character. Really beautiful. Well, I'm excited to meet Dan Chalice. The finest Christian man I ever did know. Finest Christian man? Okay. We'll see how Christian he is in this fucking movie. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch from 1982. In uh, 3, 2, 1, play. I will have the Universal logo right now. The globe is spinning with the aura around it. Yep, I got that too. Oh, we were already hitting five times. Can you hear my uh, movie? Wow. My movie? Wow. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to get uh, blacklisted. I can fix it. It's okay, YouTube, don't copyright strike. Okay. How about now? Nope, don't hear anything. I think we're good. I love this opening credits, too. I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite John Carpenter scores. Like, it's... Honestly, the, the score is up there with the original. It really is. The opening credits with the TV screen and the, the orange lights and the pumpkin. It's just, this is a very 80s feeling movie. And I think you'll get that too. I already got it with all like the static and the fucking strobes that I see right here. Yeah. Like even look at the makeup, like that baby blue... The font and, and you know I've seen a as well to help like co you know to co compose it. Yeah, I've seen that like whenever I like um I, I'm using Amazon by the way guys and the cover of it it looks so dark and ominous it looks way more uh uh demonic than shall you say like all the other Halloween uh covers. And I think that's probably what made me way more intrigued by it. I know, I hope it's this, I hope we get the same treatment, <laughs> but we'll see. Erwin Yablons, his name was on it, but he basically had nothing to do with it. If I understand correctly, Deborah Hill told Fangoria at some point, she was like, yeah, we basically, like, he wasn't allowed on the set. Like, literally all that happened was they wrote him a check. Because his name literally had to be on it. That was about it. They that was about him, it. They wanted him to have nothing to do with it. Because it, mm. it just, it ruined their relationship with each other. The whole lawsuit thing. And and then after, the thing that I don't understand is, after he fought for them to make Halloween 2, and for him to get what he wanted, he sold the rights to Dino De Laurentiis. And it's like, why would you, like, Why? It's Halloween history. It's all right. Southern California. Oh, but we're starting off uh, weird with some running. Yeah. Is this Michael? Yes. Where's Michael? Northern California. About how sci-fi am I going to get with this? Pretty sci-fi. Huh. I think you'll be surprised. I do. Uh, 
It was filmed in Lolita, California. Can you hear mine? No. Okay. This is also a uh, fun fact here. Is I've that been... Kramer from Seinfeld? No, it kind of looks like him, though. I've thought the same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. He, well, here's the thing. The the soundtrack, this, this track is called Chariots of Pumpkins, which I think is freaking an awesome title. But <laughs> um, I the music that I chose for... The purely and simply evil intro. Ba, 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 is it based ba, on this? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, yeah, that it reminded That's me cool. of this, and I was like, "Well, that works." Then you know, it kind of reminded me of *Chariots of Pumpkins*. This kind of weird, like repetitive figure and super '80s, mm -hmm. super synth. You got like the mysteriousness uh -oh. of like you're like, "Who the hell? Are, like, who is being chased? What's happening? Why is he there?" This film just kind of unravels like piece by piece. You never like fully understand oh, what's shit. going on until the end, and then by the time you get to the end, you're like, "What the? F like, this is weird." So we don't know who this guy is already. No, starting off, you 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 don't know who these people are. It's confusing. I call bullshit. You can't pull a cinder block like that. If you're being choked by someone, you can. I always thought this death was kind of dumb. <laughs> Does like, he die? What? Oh, bullshit. I know. Like that, I feel like that wouldn't kill you. The car was going like one mile an hour. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, it might hurt. Something that heavy hurt, moving? But yeah. You well, you know he died. died. Well, you know the car killed them whenever you hear the high-pitched squeal of the sound music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, back in the 80s, it was like the, the high-pitched, like, squeal whenever you hear someone dying. Right. I gotta say, man, you Carpenter I, Carpenter's films have such an 80s vibe. Like, this movie feels very 80s. And this was 1980, so it was kind of the dawn of, or no, this was 1982. Excuse me, the fog, the fog came out in 1980, and then how is that it was? Came out was that the garage that we saw uh, Michael in in Halloween Three? No. Bro, wasn't in California. <laughs> Wait, which one was it? So Michael burns up in Halloween Two, but he returns in Halloween Four, like all wrapped up, right? Yes. Okay. Here's the first time we see the commercial. Eight more days till Halloween. Silver. What is this? Bomb. The Silver Shamrock commercial, Miguel. You're going to get to know it well. Okay. You're going to be singing it out of your asshole here pretty soon. They glow in the dark. Don Post actually uh, made the masks for this film. Is that um, the same guy that made the Myers mask? Well, he so Don Post. I mean, Don Post was a real dude. He, uh, he, he very, if you're into mask collecting, I mean, you know that he made. He was one of the <clears> first dudes that really made the rubber, like the latex latex masks like popular and he yeah. was very innovative um in that field and he actually did one he he supplied the william shatner mask that tommy lee wallace transformed into the shape um the shapes mask for halloween and halloween 2 um and he also provided these three variants the the skull and the pumpkin and the and the witch for halloween 3 oh movie. shit
R.I.P. Kramer. R.I.P. Oh, no, he's still alive. Yeah, he's alive. He didn't die. Yep. Not yet, at least. <laughs> there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. The lovely Tom Adkins. Do you know do you notice the wife? <laughs> no, what about the wife? Oh, <gasps> is that Annie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yep. I think that solidifies the fact that this is like wholly separate from Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nancy Loomis, which she goes she she ended up going by Nancy Kai's later on i think after she got married but yeah second time we sh i'm telling how you many have done a shot every single time you hear the commercial because we would be destroyed by the end of this are you serious is this gonna come on a lot a lot Ugh. listen this goes to show you though how old nancy loomis was compared to jamie lee curtis and pj souls because she looks pretty old there, and this was only three years after Halloween. After Halloween mm -hmm. 1. I mean... I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I swear I didn't do nothing. Why did they leave the mask on his chest? Like, I feel like that's weird. I'm not sure. Third time. Silver Shamrock commercial. Third number. We're going to count. Third time. Is this is this going to be like a, a hallucinate, hallucinating thing? Like hypnotizing thing? I don't know. Oh, my God. Not necessarily. No, it's not. I won't say it's hypnotizing. Thorazine, which is what they uh, had Michael Myers under. There's all kinds of nods to it, and there you'll see there's some various, very uh, various, very <laughs> obvious nods to Halloween. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can catch them. Oh, you'll it. Trust me, you'll you'll catch it. I will. Okay. Like it literally references the movie multiple times. Oh, like the movie's in there somewhere? Yes, yeah. Just wait. Title Nine. <laughs> Bro, that's how he is. He is a straight up womanizer. Like, dude. I mean, look at that. Has... Look at that mustache, though. Mm. Dude definitely has nine women at once. Like, no doubt in my mind. From uh, mustache to mustache. Much Straight respect. Alcoholic, definitely sleeps with multiple women. Every time he talks to, to Nancy Kai's character, to his ex-wife, he's just like, I'll talk to you tomorrow, bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got, like, no time for her at all. Zero. What is it with hospitals in the Halloween movies being completely freaking empty? Like, there's literally nobody there, other than Halloween Kills. I don't know. Because, well, if you think about it, hospitals, like, around this time, are dead. I don't know if you've ever been in a hospital uh, this late at night. Where you are. I mean, if you're in, like, Chicago or New York or Miami or something, then obviously you don't. But I guess for a small town, yeah. I think this, like, opened the door for, like, uh, what's it called? The man in black kind of ambiance, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, already. 
Are you intrigued by the men in suits? A little bit, yeah. You're about to be even more intrigued. Oh no. This death is rough. <laughs> One single punch? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Brother broke his nose like that? Wait, did he like uh, put his fingers know. in his eyes? Yeah, he just like shoved his fingers into his eye sockets and kind of like rolled them around a little bit. It's pretty gross. That's some rough shit. Bro, fucked his nose up, dog. Oh, no. And he just walks away. Are you serious? Yep. That's a uh, boss move right there. The last of it. You don't understand. Chalice is like, I'm too hungover for this. Why are you screaming? Yeah. <laughs> a man just died. I like the music. Yeah. Bro, just wait. Bro, what? What? Yep. I love this movie already. <laughs> <laughs> I already do. This movie's dope. And he just looks at it like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> you know people in the Bro. theater in 82 were like... You know what? I 100% believe that they're like, at this point in the movie, they're probably like, Okay, but where's Michael? <laughs> Look at that fireman. What a fireman outfit right I there. Know, right? <laughs> Wait. Is is he is this Annie that he's talking to right now? Yes. Why did he say ex-wife? I thought they were his wife. <clears throat> now he looks shooken up. Yeah, he did seem shooken up there. Yeah. Silver Shamrock Novelties. You know what? I feel like John Carpenter had a great uh, opportunity right here. No. Already from the back. I think I'm going to like this movie. Yeah, I think you will. I, I really do. So why do because you think, I think it's had a good opportunity? Well, I think it's because... He had an opportunity to do, like, a really dope, like, Halloween anthology-like series. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It just doesn't have to be about Michael Myers. It's just about random things that happens during Halloweens. Well, that's what he Halloweens. wanted. Halloweens. Like, yeah. That's what he wanted. But, but I don't think I don't think he, they were able to do it. And then the Twilight Zone... I'm sure the Twilight Zone's way older, but... You know what I mean? Like, it, like, it could have been just as, like, interesting as... Um... As the Twilight Zone... Yeah. Like an adult version of like a scary stories to tell in the dark kind of thing. Kinda, yeah. Well, fuck. Scary stories, to, like Tales from the Crypt, that shit was scary. 
Yeah. And that was an anthology. Right. A Twilight Zone kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah it worked. I know they were also concerned about the fact that literally they were putting out... Like, when he signed the deal for Halloween 2, I, I know there was some concern that they were putting out... I mean, literally, Halloween 2 came out in 81, and Halloween 3 came out in 82. Like, there was no... Oh, shit. ...in between. I mean, it was just like, boom, boom, right on to the next one. Yeah. Uh oh, three days before Halloween. Three more days till Halloween. 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 Of course, drugs. Exactly. <laughs> My man rock climbs or something. Apparently they do. Right. What? Seriously, the dude, the dude would be, he would have, like, more sexual harassment lawsuits thrown at him today. Yeah, that man would not make it as a doctor, at least today. Sean Clark went in that bar in uh, on a whore's hallowed grounds. Looks pretty much the same. Why is there a cartoon in a bar, anyways? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty on the nose, guys. <laughs> yeah. Number four. <laughs> I love that. Make every single person in the movie in these anthology series tell you how much they hate Halloween just to make it even more uh, better. So you following me? That should tell you a lot about the kind of doctor he is. I know, right? And that a nurse knew she could find him there. Yeah. Fourth woman, fourth commercial. Yeah. He said, <laughs> he said, three dates of Halloween. That was such a lie, wasn't it? Okay. Yep. Kiss me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if I saw that, I'd lose my shit too already. Yeah. So did he own a Halloween store? I believe so. Oh, look, there the mask. Yep. Have you now? And you know, it's funny because she says she's been doing detective work. They're basically like detectives almost in this film like the way they pre they're presented you know like and these two the, yeah like there are there are our eyes to like what's happening you know mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't mind having the Halloween 3 masks at some point. They're just, they're, if I want one, I'm going to want all three, and they're like 60 bucks a piece. Oh, like the Season of the Witch? Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting them, but they're they're just expensive. <laughs> Told Miguel I just ordered my, uh, my ends poster today. Yeah, guys, check out the 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 mask review. It's funny because you know we're sitting here watching H three, and they were like, "There will never be another Michael Myers movie again." <laughs> Psych. Psych fail. The kids don't even remember your name. <laughs> Do you ever see Annie again, or is it just from the phone? I'll call you Monday. Listen, bro hung up on, bro said, I'll call you Monday, hung up on his wife, grabbed a six pack of Miller Lite, and got into a car with another woman. A stranger, if that. That's a man, if I've ever yeah. seen one. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> Are we at the same spot, Miguel? I'd say we are, yeah. Okay. Are they on the interstate right now? No, they're currently out of space. Okay. Sounds good. Santa Mira, home of Silver Shamrock novelties. I do have, I don't have that sign, but I have a, um, a Santa Mira, California, Silver Shamrock novelties um, final processing sign. Yeah. This is very Irishy. I mean, obviously, it's pretty on the nose with Silver yeah. Shamrock, but. Okay. Red flag number three. Yep. Bro, what? Why is everyone okay? If I went to a town and I saw everyone look at me Everybody like this, was like oddly watching you. Yeah, she said it perfectly. She said, "I feel like a goldfish." Yeah. Oh wow! Cameras everywhere. I guess. Yeah. I don't like this town. Yeah. I saw there was a review. <clears throat> Someone, uh, let me see. Uh, Vincent Canby with the New York Times said that, uh, let me see, uh, his, he, he had remarked that Halloween 3 manages the not easy feat of being anti children, anti capitalism, anti television, and anti Irish all at the same time. Golly. And it really low key does if you think about it. Which I know you're just now kind of getting into it, but you, it'll that'll make more sense at the end. Yeah. Is everything Irish? I'm curious how many of these people over here that are speaking Irish were actually Irish. Yeah. Probably not many. Probably very little. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> what an excuse. Mr. Cochran. That looks like the car that was there before. Right. Connell. Who is this? Love the Winnebago. Fuck. <laughs> Buddy Cuffer. You know, it's funny because Santa Mira is also the setting of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which actually has Are you a serious? Of callback. Yeah, Tommy Lee Wallace was a really big fan of that film. So Isn't that a movie we're supposed of, to check out soon? Of. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at some point, too. Dang, everybody's... Chaotic. I, I like how everybody shows up randomly to this empty town at the same time. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I could use a drink. You won't be uh, in the clothes long, though, my friend. <laughs> oh, if that didn't sound any more uh, provocative. I know, right? That's a dumb question, Miss Grimbridge. Right? He is quick. He is quick. Oh, my yeah. God. Yep. That's they so funny. Zero time. Zero time. No, I mean, none. Oh boy, just, oh girl just <laughs> lost her father. They have literally, yeah, A, they've known each other for not even two days. And second of all, he's trying to help her solve the murder of her father. Like. Oh, there's a curfew too and everything? Curfew, you're not allowed to be out after a certain time. All animals have to be in. I don't like this already. Yep. I don't like this town. <clears throat> it's very shut up, don't talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a cool setting for the factory, too. It looks good. I don't know. I've yet to see the factory. Uh oh. No, no, uh oh. No, we've seen the factory. Uh oh. What? The cat's out. Oh. Am I behind or ahead? No, you. I just didn't understand what you were uh oh <laughs> Okay, how can you find anybody? Yeah, how can yeah. you find anybody in this camera? I don't know. You, you shouldn't be able to. It looks awful. Shamrock Savings Building. Yep. You know what's interesting, though, is there's a curfew, but that, that liquor store is open. Like, really? Exactly. <laughs> I ain't got no diseases. Not in these uh, COVID days. About this cock ring.
Yeah, you hate to see that. What? A company coming into a random local town and just... And all right, outsourcing um, all their employees? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. He, this man's talking about a terroristic threat right now. I know, right? I'm talking about the movie, Trent. Calm down. <laughs> Trent, you don't need to send the, the SWAT team. It'll be okay. Yeah. I love how he just takes like that threat and just like, okay, this town is crazy. Yeah. He's like, okay, does this, I, heard, I know. Does this count? Uh, no. Nah. We won't count it. We'll let this one slide. Bro's got a drink. I know, right? Is that cheese? Got oh my god, cheese in a can. Sandwich. Uh oh. Is he gonna break the nose too? Uh -uh. Dick Warlock. Is that Dick Warlock? Yeah, that's who played Michael in H two. Oh shit. Except my, he didn't rip anybody's friggin' head off in H2. Oh my god. I know, right? <laughs> These deaths are gnarly. Yeah, that's one of the gnarlier moments. And it's funny because the... Um, uh, what was the gentleman's name? Uh, Nigel Neal, who they got to write the original screenplay... Um, the, the final screenplay kind of ended up being a little bit of a, a mix between... Nigel Keel's script and John Carpenter's script and Tommy Lee Wallace's script, um, which, of course, Tommy Lee Wallace and John Carpenter were friends, so I'm sure they were kind of on the same page. But he did not like the fact that they wanted it to be so gory. But I know, like, Dino De Laurentiis wanted it to be a little gorier. They wanted mm -hmm. it to be a little bit more of a horror-style movie because, you know, Nigel Neal was into... Uh, he, he was into... Um, uh, like Doctor Who and some of that. You like that British sci-fi kind of thing? Star Trek, like, he was kind of into that. So I think he wanted it to just be straight-up sci-fi. And they, of course, wanted to keep the horror elements, which works. Yeah. It works as a, as a sci-fi horror-type film. I gotcha. It's got a unique vibe. So she's here to, so this lady right here is here to, like, talk about a possibly fake mask, right? Yeah. I'm going to say this right now. The the badge, that, like, the tag on the on the mask. Who, do, that bothers me. Why would you do that and get all of the blankets soaking wet? You've never had zero towels in your life when you're after a shower? You've never been caught in that sticky situation? You would grab the sheets that you're about to sleep on. So I'd grab a sheet. On soaking wet sheets. I'd grab a sheet, my guy. Whatever. Anyways, yeah, you mentioned the uh, the the silver shamrock, like the the little tag on there, right? Yeah. The chip. Yeah.
frog. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Already? <laughs> already? Jesus! Oh. I feel like in the contract, they oh boy was like, I need to sleep with at least one woman in every movie why I do. Did, why did she have lingerie on her though? I don't know. Like for they knew what they were doing. Uh, did they though? No. That's not something that you would just wear under your clothes. That's straight up lingerie. That's fair. Some people like wearing lingerie under their stuff. I don't know. Got some titties. Never mind the investigation, my guys. I know, right? She's forgotten all about her dad. Number five. Are they going to go again? <laughs> oh my god. I know, right? I feel like the daughter's in on it. It has to. Wait, wait. Now you ask? I know, right? Like, now I'm, you ask? She's like, I'm older than I look. Like, bro, you needed to ask that question six hours ago when you kissed her for the first time. Yeah, like, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, look, Carlos Casanata. Cool. Yep. Uh oh. There. That she found the chip. Investigative journalists. That is true. If you think about it, they are. Yeah, right. They are. <laughs> Low key. <clears throat> what an interesting chip. What? What? Wait. Did he just become? Did she become she Godzilla? Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pretty sick, isn't it? What? Yeah. Did it shoot a bug in her? No, it it wasn't the bug. The bug, it, the you'll see, you'll you'll see a, a more hardcore version in a little bit. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Once Connell Cochran's plan started to take effect, and Tom Adkins' butt cheeks. My man needs to start doing squats. <laughs> Bro looked like gotta, a... You gotta get a little bit of tone in there. Yeah, oh boy looked like a fucking uh, rotten, rotten apple right there. See, listen, if if I saw that, I'd be like, okay, we're leaving. I'm sorry, but we're we're done. Right. Wow, I I literally forgot he was a doctor. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Oh, so he's a doctor too? The dude who owns the toy factory. There he is. I already hate him. Good evening, Sir Raffles. I already hate him. Good evening. Marvelous. 
they're taking her to the factory. He sounds like the he Loki sounds like the Grinch in the OG cartoon. <laughs> That's true. And go, she got her a drink, and he stuffed the tree up like. You know, the henchman thing kind of makes it creepy, too. All these dudes that are just in suits or lab coats or... Yeah, there's the factory. Ah, okay, I gotcha. Yep. Very much. There you go. Listen, if I saw that, I'd be like, look, I'm sorry about your dad, but we're leaving. <laughs> like, like we're, I, I don't care that much about what happened in the factory. Like, we're... Exactly. We're, we're going. Why does this investigation look like... It sounds like such a clusterfuck. Like, nothing's going right. Oh. So are they not people? I have no comment. Look at me. Calling me an investigative I, dude, journalist. I'm not gonna lie, you actually called that fairly early on. What, that they're not people? I, yeah, the first time I saw this, I did not call that that early. Really? They're robot. They're robots. Just... His head okay, so... people are robots. Okay, I'm not I'm not surprised at all because of how he was a... Old boy was able to just rip a man's head off. Yeah. What, Dick, War, Dick Warlock just like... Yeah. Joop. <laughs> Joop. Old boy popped that off like a fucking wine bottle. I was like, Phew, okay. When you own the town, you can also run the stop signs. That's true, I guess. Oh, God, they're around each other's shoulders, too, and everything. This is so cringe. The Shamrock logo is on everything. It's a cool-looking little town, though. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah, it's a pretty neat little town, sure. Okay, I'm not going to lie. It's a fair question what old boy asked. How old are you? Old girl looks like she's 16. Yeah. Very much, please. Are they all here to pick up toys? Clark Griswold. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> he tapped his wife like, look at, look at me. Look at me. Oh, so he's a salesman. Yeah. Okay. I love how quick he was able to know. What'd you say? I love how he was very quick to, like, 
know exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it, it was... wasn't fam. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. I'm guessing Tell those are the masks. Weird vibes are us around here, though. Pretty cool you get to see the mask making process, though. I mean, true, yeah. I will say that's kind of cool. This was back before assembly lines were a thing. Like, that's insane. Yeah, I'll have to pick up the H3 mask at some point. Which one are you wanting to pick up, though? All three of them at some point. You could also argue that there's the like the social context or commentary of like corporate greed and like corporations having too much power you know yeah i can see that what were you saying about the irish thing it's it's i don't know that that uh the the new the dude from the new york times the reviewer said that it's anti-irish i don't know how much of that's really true i don't know or i don't necessarily think that they fully intended it to be anti-irish no, but they really did make this Irish man become, you know, very, uh, very evil <laughs> already. This is like a weird, uh, spinoff of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh boy. Those haven't been through final processing. That mom is too busy worried about checking her lipstick for the 17th time since they've been there that... Right. She's not concerned about the fact that this is weird all over it. The usual. Pish posh. Mm hmm. I understand. Is he talking about her husband? Yes. Robocop. I know, right? <laughs> What do you think of this score? It's, it's pretty unique. Score. It's unique, very 80s, very synth, you know. Yeah, I'd agree. Bro, that looks insane. Just the way they're just standing. Yeah. Can you imagine? Dumb bitch. Yeah. I'm that sorry. Was dumb. That was a stupid bad move. move. And they just friggin' come out of the woodwork. They do. I love how he just blows it off. 
Oh, I'm you see his face. I you know, see his face. I He's know, like, oh, I'm going to rock your shit later on in this movie. I know. Dano, I, I don't know how he's Dano Harry. Dano Harley, who played Connell Cochran, dude. He had that. He had down the weird, like. Like yeah. He had the weird, sinister look down. But first, let's take let's bang. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. That was Jamie Lee Curtis on the phone. The oh shit, I just noticed that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Number six, by the way. Silver Shamrock number six. Yeah, she was uh she was the, the operator. That's pretty you cool. Can, I ain't gonna you lie. Can, you can tell. What did what did what did Jamie Lee Curtis think about uh, her not returning for Halloween three? I think she was fine with it. I think she. I mean, she was starting to move on. She was starting to get other. You know, she was starting to get other roles. She. I mean, Tom. You know, or Tom. Uh, Halloween had already kind of like propelled her her future. You know, so she. I think she was kind of starting to move on from it a little bit at that point. I gotcha. Oh, you got me all sorts of bent if I saw that. I know, right? <laughs> I love this already. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Tommy Lee Wallace, which it wasn't like... It wasn't possible didn't make sense to but originally all of connell's robot henchmen dudes he mm -hmm. wanted them to be redheads he envisioned them all being redheads because he thought it would be creepy. i thought you said rednecks i was like no, that's fucked redheads. no 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 redheads um but yeah and it's funny even the tagline of this like Again, with the anti-children thing, which, again, you'll get in a minute, but, like, because this one, essentially, Deborah Hill and Tommy Lee Wallace, like, basically described this film as witchcraft in the computer age, which you can mm -hmm. kind of tell some of those themes, like, you know, the the chip thing and the, the Halloween thing and, like, but even the tagline, like, the original tagline, the night he came home, this is the night yeah. the one came home. Yeah. Dang. I like of, that. Yeah. It's full of uh <clears throat> of little nods. I like this movie, man. I'm starting I'm starting to dig it. I'm yeah, not gonna it's lie. It's cool. It's a cool little investing I'm telling you, the only thing that really goes against it is the fact that they had to throw the Halloween title in front of it. Like if they yeah. would have done that, it would have been fine. I think it would have yeah. been okay. But people went into it with a preconceived notion of, oh, Michael's back, and that didn't happen. People wanted Michael and Loomis, and instead they got Chalice boning somebody that he thought was, like, 18. Yeah. I think that this is probably, this movie is probably just going to be another victim of the tagline of the movie title. Like, it would, it would be a good, neat little Halloween movie, but it just had Halloween on it. Yeah. You got to admire uh, Cochran because he really just like, uh, what's it called? He like cornered these three uh, fucking masks and that's all they make. 
Is there is there a Michael mask in this anywhere? I don't believe so. That been that would be cool, or just another giant middle finger to the fans, though. You know when there have been a lot of people who have been like, "Wouldn't it be cool if Michael is the way he is because his mask is a silver shamrock mask?" Ill. I know. I don't like it. Ill. There were even people when when as soon don't as I don't want free, Michael to be a a a product of some of a, of a controlling factor. You know what I mean? And also, it would be awful if this was his backstory. Yes. I agree. That would be dumb. But, like, even in the Halloween Kills commentary, as soon as David Gordon Green said that the radio tower was going to play a role, they were like, the radio tower is emitting a frequency that's messing with the Silver Shamrock Myers mask, and it's making him do... Th and it was like, bro, shut up. Like, <laughs> you don't... You Who don't is know. this? I always thought this was a strange scene. Very, very odd scene. Holy shit. Oh, it's a robot. Oh, it's just a little doll? Yep. Or a mechanical thing? Bro went vertical for a second. <laughs> is it is that Dick Warlock? I, um, maybe. No, Old boy was like, "Don't worry, I'm a doctor." Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was your reaction when you saw that? It was just like... Like, what is happening? I would have been like, so it can be killed. I know, right? I don't know, just, just punch the belly. There's Mr. Cochran. Dang. She's dead. I'd be like, dude, I'd wipe my hand right on his coat. Yeah. The handkerchief. What is this interaction right now? Like, I don't know how this ends, but I kind of, I kind of hope Cochran like wins. Really? Just because of like the whole anthology series. Huh? You know what I mean? Like they like. It's kind of like the Michael Myers saying, it was like, it's like the Michael Myers saying, like, after Loomis shoots him and is like, okay, Loomis wins, but then, like, he, like, disappears into the ether. Yeah. Like, even though I don't like the man, I, I, I'll, I'll respect the fact that he, if he gets out alive. Like, see, like, who the fuck right. does that? I know, it's Halloween morning and he just walked outside and went... <sighs> Uh, and smile. Latex. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh, so he like programmed to like sneeze or whatnot? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I gotta hand it to you, dude. You called the robot thing. Like pretty early. Because they were mindless. Like I like you said it was sci fi and I was like, okay, well these people are obviously like, I don't know, fifty percent like either A alien or B uh robots. Yeah. Alright, you're not ready. You're not ready for what's about to happen. I'm so excited to find out about the bug thing. No. Remember Is the Ellie gonna die? When the T V was on? Yeah. Whoa. Are they all robots? No. Dude stole part of Stonehenge. Because it's got some ancient Halloween. Like, that's why he said, like, ancient technology. They were talking about, at the beginning on TV, there was a piece of Stonehenge that was missing. Bro is using Stonehenge for his, like, weird witchcraft thing. Yeah. My jaw is dropped, guys. I'm know, not gonna right? lie. You, you couldn't you couldn't have ever guessed that that was gonna happen. No. Also, don't you love the whole let me the whole villain tells you their entire diabolical plan moment before I kill you. Film? Yeah, I know, right? Like, yeah, it's like you, let me tell you my diabolical plan. <laughs> like Yeah. It's like it's like what does he have that that tells you that he that you want to tell him the entire story? Like he's just a doctor. Oh, is she gonna die? Oh, she's gonna die hard, ain't she? Not necessarily. Oh no, does he kill the kid? I have no comment. Bro, that's fucked. You're about, you're, so you're, so let me, for, I know for all of us who have seen H3 and who are fans of the film know what's about to happen, but Miguel, let me just tell you, you're about to uh, realize Cochran's, pl Cock you're about to realize Cochran's uh, master plan here. I'd be sketched out, like, walking to the hallway. This is a fucking, uh, a trap. Yeah. That's such an 80s, like, home family show. He just typed in 666. I just want you to know that. <laughs> number seven. Bum, ba -da -dum, ba -dee -da -da. Number seven. Number seven. Oh, does he make the kids killers? No. The irony. You see the chip lighting up? Yeah. 
Oh. He just melt the brain? Just wait. You you've seen nothing yet. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, bro. I still don't get it. Cochrane wants to kill all of the children in the world when this TV... Like, every kid wearing that mask is gonna die when they see that commercial because they're all gonna go to watch the big giveaway and they're all gonna be wearing their witch mask or their client or their uh jack-o'-lantern mask or whatever else but why did they turn into like why did why does it become a a pit of uh of bugs and spiders i don't know it just like it like disintegrates your head and bugs and crap crawl out and crickets and snakes and worms and it's pretty gross. That's pretty wacky. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, that's. Oh, now he, he looks away. To kill all of the children in the world. That's his goal. Fuck you, Cochran. Now I don't want you to win. <laughs> I know, right? How do you feel about saying you want Cochran to win now? Yeah, no. Fuck you, Cochran. And you, if you remember. Chalice has a personal stake in this because remember he brought the kids Halloween masks and they were like, yeah. Mommy already got us masks. And they had the silver shit. I think they had the pumpkin and the skull. Number eight. It'd be cool if they had a Haddonfield, Illinois. I know, right? How cool. All the, Like, this is cool. I like seeing this stuff. All the kids riding around. Because you don't see that, you know? No. Halloween is not like that anymore. The old 80s stores. Look at all that smog in Los Angeles. I know, right? There's his kids. Oh no. There's the, the 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 poster shot. Yeah. It's cool. That this is one of my favorite sequences in the movie where you see the kids all around the the world, like wearing the masks and buying them up and Yeah. I think that's really cool. I love how she's still investigating, too. I know, right? Oh. Yeah. She Don't found out. Robot. Is that is that Lori again? I don't know if that was JLC or not. Hey, let me ask you this. How much did how much did Jamie Lee Curtis get uh for Halloween? For the original? Yeah. She made two thousand dollars a week. I think she got like eight grand. For the original house. imagine how much he made with this with this one eight dollars <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say like she maybe at best like a paid. they probably just no like, john was probably like hey would you do this as a cameo and she's like yeah sure i don't care yeah <laughs> it's funny though it's kind of like what christopher nolan does with his films where he uses a lot of the same crew and actors like john carpenter did that like you know, of course, he's like really good friends with Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is in a lot of his films. Nick Castle, who played Michael uh, in the OG and who also played him um, 
you know, in you know some of the current films. I mean, he he kept a lot of the same cast. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what's the kill count by now? It's like I don't know. Five right now? I think tell it's me, five. Tell me when he actually kills her. I think mine got off a little bit. I the remote slid. It's not a lot. It didn't get off a lot, but. Sorry, spoiler alert. She is about to now. Die, but... I think okay. they're grappling and stuff. The drills in his hand now. And it's about to go on her forehead. Killed her. Yep. Rip. We just cut. 7.30 p.m.? No. I'm still looking at her body. Oh. Now it's 7.30 p.m. Factory? Yep. I feel like that's an awkward way to tie somebody up. Bro, he is not going anywhere. <laughs> I know. Just, he looks super awkward. It looks weird. Does he hate that? Yeah, he's very he he's all into the whole Celtic, the origin of Halloween and what it used to mean. And... Oh, okay. Hey, we said it right. And not Sam Hain, like Loomis says it in Halloween 2. <laughs> Isn't he technically a warlock, though? And not a witch? Because he's a dude. Can wizard? A dude be, can a dude be a witch or a wizard or whatever? I don't know. We don't generalize at this point anymore. I know, right? <laughs> Uh-oh. It's awkward. And wait. <laughs> Is this Halloween? That's hilarious. Ooh. I know, right? Wolf That's pretty on cool. TV. Yeah. The keys! The keys! I think it's cool they threw in the little nod, the music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty cool. And then we cut. Honestly, it's surprisingly meta for 1982. How do you how so? Just the fact that they keep throwing in the Halloween references and you keep seeing it on TV. Oh, like okay. A movie within a movie kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I get that. I think that's kind of cool. And back to it. <laughs> <laughs> back to it, yeah. Well, that was easy. I know, right?
Well, he obviously wasn't bound up, uh, you know, the right way. That was stupid. What do you mean? That he threw the mask and it went, Joop! and it perfectly landed on there. That was dumb. Forty-three shares. You think so? What? What? What time did he say the commercial comes on? Like, what does he gotta like stop it by? I think eight thirty. Nine. Okay. Nine. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, Ren. Nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Nine o'clock. Right right oh boy. See how it's more suspense based though and less you know What do you mean? It's definitely more suspense based and less um straight up jump scare horror based. You know? Yeah. It's got more of that detective <clears throat> mystery, like what the hell is going on kind of vibe to it, which I think works. I think honestly it, I know at the time people didn't think it but it was probably a little bit of a breath of fresh air from, from especially from Halloween 2 because Halloween 2 was gorier and a little bit more hardcore than Halloween 1. Yeah. I'll tell you, he keeps bragging about how many masks they sold. But there's a hell of a lot of boxes in, left in this factory of that could have gone out. They couldn't have sold that many. I mean, same. Yeah, it's Halloween, and they still have that many boxes. Like, think about know, that. Right? Like, you didn't do that great. No. <laughs> Shut up. That's not enough for me to tell them to remove the mask. I know, right? Linda, listen, please. She straight up said they love me more. Dang, Dang Annie. Annie was more like, my Paul. Oh, Paul. Paul. Not anymore. Are you drunk again? <laughs> what the hell are her ugly boobs? I love how she's just like out cold for like I know, right? the entirety of this. Is that not locked? Huh. Are they all going? Oh, never mind. I thought they were all going to catch her. I was like, Jesus. We got 44 minutes. A lot can happen. Apparently. Or if you're going by movie time, 13 minutes, if that... Mm -hmm. 
So what are they going to do? Destroy the Stonehenge or something? You'll see. That's not inconspicuous at all. <laughs> <laughs> so 80s. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Very uh, Scooby-Doo-ish, if you know what I'm saying. Takes the mask off. Connell Cochran <laughs> from Super Shamrock. There's Dick Warlock. Does he walk like Michael? Look at him. Of course he does. You can tell. Yeah. Could you imagine if he just he turned his head and then slowly did the head tilt? Yeah, right. The Myers head tilt. Wouldn't that be dope? I'd love it. I'd love for him to act. I'd love for like to be a little bit of a, like a reference to Michael from Dick Warlock. Yeah. So what happens to all the masks that are in the boxes already? Like when the thing when the thing comes on, like no do they idea. all activate then? I don't know. Like I he's literally, a... he's literally sitting under a like a just a massive bomb at that point. Yeah, there's a lot of a very they left a lot of things ambiguous. Um, even the ending, as you'll kind of see, it, it there, there's a lot of ambiguity in in the story and a lot of people including myself actually think that they need to this would make a really good series like a tv series because i mean honestly there's okay so nobody much sees him i know right stupid there's so much that you could do with the lore of this i'd agree like there's just there there's a lot that you could do Oh. He blows it up. And he just stands there as if, like, you're not going to do anything. Oh, beautiful. I know, right? It's pretty dope. Smart. Very smart. Wait, why did they die? Because the chips were all going off around them. Why didn't the chips go off around around them? Around Cochrane? I don't know. Around Cochrane and what's his name? Okay, turn it to Sludge. Does he drop the pillar on him? Oh, wait. Whoa, what's going on? This is the dumbest moment in the entire film. What? Like, what is... What? <laughs> Cochran! What? <laughs> what? Yeah, that was... See, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, all the masks should have blown up. Yeah. That was the dumbest moment in the entire film. Yeah. Like, didn't yep, make see? any sense whatsoever. And that's why I... you could really explore the lore of this a little bit more. You could You could explain a little bit. Because, again, whereas with Michael, you don't need to know. You don't want to know. There's no point in knowing this you could kind of explore a little bit more what happened you could you could slow down the pacing you could stretch the story out you could do a little bit more with it
848. So they have 12 minutes. What are they going to do? Oh no, she becomes an android, doesn't she? Yep. When they had her, they they turned her into one. I would not be able to get up after hitting a tree. Oh, shit. It's pretty gross. I mean, I kind of dig it. dig the robot thing <laughs> no i dig the fact that he like super mario's uppercutting her right off the neck i know oh my god Ever it's like a still going Whoop. it's like a sci-fi like, it's like the Whoop. you know the androids and like alien yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that i think it's another reason why it's not liked i guess oh come on That's not how that works. Did he crack his neck? It's gotta be like a snail that follows him forever. <laughs> Just keeps crawling around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, bro, you have like nine minutes at this point, and you, you got a lot of work to do. Bro, it's never ending with this bitch. I know, right? Wait, did he sleep with her when she was an android? If I understand correctly, I think... At least this is what I'm going to choose to believe. Uh, I think... I'm going to choose to believe, not the fact that he actually slept with an android. Yeah, I think that she was human at that point. Ugh. I think he didn't, act like, I, she didn't actually turn into a robot until after. And we're back to where the movie began. Look at that. He's like, bro, another crazy white man. Don't I know you? Bro, a minute. 30 seconds, actually. Who trick-or-treats at a gas station? Who does that? Yeah, this is suspenseful as fuck, man. Oh. oh, I'm not doing our count. I think it's I think we're at like nine. I think we're at nine or ten. Ten or eleven now. It's 
been tense. Dang. Ambiguous. Did they get it off in time? Did that one commercial, did that one station still have it on? Who knows? You get your ambiguous, did Cochran win ending, Miguel? There you go. There's Halloween 3 for you. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> also, fuck that child. He just walked in there and just started flipping through the channels like, okay, I'm going on another channel. Well, straight I'll up, go on another channel. I would have ripped those masks off of those kids. I'd have been like, I'm at least saving you three. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Which he yeah. did get two. He got two of the channels off, but it's just the ambiguity of that third the uh, the ambiguity of the third one. Did he get that third channel off? Did it stay on? Like we don't know. So it's a fun flick, though, isn't it? I kind of liked it. I'm not gonna I lie. I liked it. I really do. It's got its own. Um, definitely feels very Halloween. The holiday uh, feels very 80s. Feels very John Carpenter. It's got a great <clears throat> score. You gotta love, even though he's a womanizer and he's kind of a douche. You gotta love Tom Atkins as Doctor Chalice. You really do. Yeah. And Tom Adkins is a really good guy, too. I liked him a lot in um, my favorite horror comedy, which is Night of the Creeps as well, which we're going to get to that next season when we do, uh, after we finish up Elm Street and get into zombies. But yeah. this is a fun one, man. Definitely, guys, be sure to uh, join us for um, this episode of Purely and Simply Evil coming up very, very soon. We're going to take a deep, 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 deep dive into Halloween 3 season of The Witch Lots that we didn't get a chance to talk about here, too, but now that Miguel has seen it, we'll be able to dive a little bit deeper into the production, and, um, you know, and, and it, it's interesting because this is pretty much what you get. There's, I don't really think there's many deleted scenes or extra cuts or, you know what I mean? This is pretty much what it, it is, so it's an interesting one. So, Miguel, final thoughts on uh, Halloween 3, after your, moments after your first viewing. Dang, son. I don't know what to think. Like, it's so <laughs> 80s sci-fi, but I yeah. like it. I'm not gonna lie. I kinda like it. It's cool, dude. So, it's definitely got a really, really neat vibe. Um, yeah. I mean, do you want me to give it a rating, like, right now? No, don't or do you want me to? rating. I just didn't know if you had any extra thoughts, but it's cool, man. I, I, I dig it. Definitely be sure to join us for that episode, because it's gonna be a fun one, so... Uh, guys, it's been our full commentary of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, new episodes of our shows premiere every single Tuesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern. We are in the ver in the middle of our very first Oktoberfest. Lots going on right now at the channel, so be sure to check everything out. Just did a watch-along of Halloween 78 and Halloween 2018. Kills is next. It is on the horizon, and uh, we have a lot to still come we, uh, listen it is october 2nd right now that we are recording this commentary october 22nd so or not october 22nd uh october 2nd so don't forget to uh stick around for the big giveaway at nine in case you forgot <laughs> in case you i love that the, the the 11 commercials that were <laughs> that were on during this episode so guys thanks so much for uh hanging with us and we'll talk to you soon peace peace cochran cochran <laughs>